Welcome to Body Work. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. Today on Adversity University, I want to talk about Sebastian Fundora and Brian Mendoza. Sebastian, it happens to the best of us, man. Uh, my guy who I call the landlord in my box to watch collection faced adversity last night in the form of a TKO devastating stoppage where he got relaxed, didn't respect the range of Brian Mendoza, walked in hands down, and you know what they say, hands down, man down. Brian Mendoza came up with a crazy wild left, caught him, stunned him, paused him, and then hit him with a right, and then another left on the way down that kind of sealed the deal, and Fondor was kind of sitting up like, what? I got hit. Like, what? He was just stuck, you know what I'm saying, for a second, because it was that last blow on the way down that Mendoza delivered that sealed the deal. Now, I was trying to look up CompuBox, because you know I'm always on my CompuBox, my numbers don't lie type deal, and they didn't have the full CompuBox, but... They basically said that Fondora had outlanded Mendoza up until that point, 100 to 62, and he was up on the scorecards. Um, I think it was 90 to 54 on two cards and 59 to 55. 60, 60 to 54 on one card and 59 to 55 on another card. So those were the three cards. Um, he was winning that fight, man. Uh, he was doing a lot of damage to Brian Mendoza. A lot of people coming in were saying that, man, you know, Fondor was a hype job. I don't think he's a hype job. I do think he is a throwback fighter. Wonderful spirit after the loss, you know what I'm saying? Consummate professional. And, you know, he spoke. He said, look, I got caught. I'll be back. His father was saying, look, man, you, you won it. So they're going to kind of shirk it off. I think they're going to go on film and... That's one of them things to where there are no foregone conclusions in boxing. And when you're heavily favored, it, it just goes to show that you can never let your guard down. Respect yourself at all times. Even when you have such a reach advantage that Fondora had over Mendoza, you can never allow yourself to get relaxed. So much like when we go into the fight with Tank and Ryan or in a way in Fortune, we all may have our favorite picks. But if our favorite fighters ever get relaxed, this is an example of what can happen. I'm sure Fondora will bounce back, man. He one of my guys. Wonderful spirit, man. Salute to Brian Mendoza because he was on his way out of that fight. He was, uh, he, uh, Fondora was laying on some, some, some leather. And, you know, I was talking to my old head before the fight, and we were talking about Fondora. He was like, what do you think? And I was telling him how much I like Fondora, and I was giving my glow and praises. And I just said, you know, he's one of the ones to where he feel comfortable on the inside. The funny thing is, he didn't caught, he didn't get caught on the inside. He got caught walking up without a jab. Nothing for anybody to respect. You always gotta have that jab out there because it's a threat of you being able to attack your opponent, especially when you're accurate with the jab. I think that's gonna be a lesson for him where he don't wanna walk in, even though he might believe that he has the height advantage. If you have an opponent with quick strike ability and they put everything on it, especially a desperation shot, you can get caught and get hurt. And it's the one you don't see because you don't expect for him to be able to get there. But Mendoza was able to get there. He delivered. Fondora got stuck. You know, he couldn't get himself up in time. And it's a learning lesson. You know, Erickson Lubin had to go through it. He fought his way back up. Um, a couple people actually was able to stop and able to come back. Uh, J Rock, um, Jason Rosario, uh, Tony Harrison. A lot of people was able to, you know, get stopped in that division and come back. I still think it's only one real true king at 54, and that's Jamel Charlo. And I believe that everybody else, man, on any given night, anything can happen. Because that 54 division, it might not ring a lot of bells, but the competition, man. You don't know who's going to be next or who can actually really rival somebody like Jamel Charlo at this point in time. You know, I just want to say, hey, Sebastian from Dora, you always going to have my support. I'm sure you can bounce back from this. I'm sure it's a learning experience. You and your team you can put some things that you saw on film. You know, we can, you know, learn how to come in behind the jab. You know, 
work on our defensive responsibility, and you'll be right back there, man. I think people still going to want to see you fight. Still an anomaly being the, the height that you are and the kind of fighting style that you have. I just think that you got to tweak a couple things, and you'll be right back in the mix with everybody else. Anyways, that's all I have, man. Salute again to Brian Mendoza for the entertaining, man. Right now, the knockout of the year, for sure. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the likes, the comments, subscriptions. Here everybody, we're boxing. But we don't take things for face value. We do that body work.